Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 57, Azure Cost Management, and my name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in our AZ 900 objective domain starts with Describe Azure Pricing, Service Level Agreements, and Life Cycles, comes down through the objective Describe Planning and Management of Costs, and terminates with the skill Describe Azure Cost Management. As always, you can get a clickable table of contents for this series by going to timw.info forward slash az900sg. Azure Cost Management is the main method that you and your colleagues, or maybe depending upon the size of your organization, just your billing people, can take a look at your Azure spend and analyze it. Specifically, the person who starts an Azure subscription, remember a couple episodes back when we looked at the Azure free account? Recall that you come into that free account with a Microsoft account identity and a payment method, and that free account is good for 30 days and or $200 USD of credit, whichever comes first, and you can optionally convert that free account into a paid subscription offer like pay as you go. So that initial Microsoft account is the default billing administrator, but that is transferable. You can look in the Azure documentation on how to do that if you need to. But as I was saying, Azure Cost Management is an excellent single pane of glass through which you can manage your invoices, your payments to Microsoft, and all of your cost tracking. Another thing you could do in there is put in your Microsoft Partner ID if you're working with a cloud solution provider. Again, I'm trying to tie in stuff that we've learned in previous lessons to make sure you haven't forgotten it. <laughs> because one thing the CSP will do is manage your costs for you. In fact, you'll be paying your CSP directly instead of Microsoft. One of the many neat ideas in Azure Cost Management is the billing scope. What billing scopes allow you to do is apply role-based access control to give people the ability to look at some or all of your Azure spend. You might have your Azure subscription or maybe at the management group scope, you're going across several subscriptions where you've got different groups who have their own cost centers. Billing scopes allows you to use, as I said, our back rules to give visibility only to certain components of your overall Azure infrastructure to the people who need to be able to see and report on those costs. In this brief demonstration, we're going to take a look at cost management. So in the Azure portal, I'm here as a subscription owner. I'm going to open up the cost management and billing blade. Now we can see here that it says Tim Warner overview. And in the upper right corner, you can see this is the identity into which I've logged in into the Azure portal. This ties into the concept of billing scopes. As I said before, if I come down under settings, we've got billing scopes and we can see that this Tim Warner account is the billing administrator, the billing account administrator. Again, the idea is you can have different people able to come into cost management and billing and look at only the resources that they're consuming and therefore the spend that affects only them. I mentioned that this is controlled through role-based access control, and we can do that here by going to access control. I am for a particular billing scope and then potentially add other users into the scope using a custom role-based access control role. You see that there's three. There's billing account owner, contributor, and reader. And I know we've covered role-based access control previously, so we know that owner can do everything. Contributor can do most everything. Primarily, the one thing the contributor cannot do is change permissions. And the reader can simply come in here and look, but not make any modifications. Good for those who need to do just reporting. Under the billing heading, notice that you can look at your invoice data, recurring charges, subscriptions that are in that billing scope. The real meat and potatoes, as I like to call it, in cost management is found under cost analysis. This is where you can look and dial up what I call pretty pictures. You can look at, by default, your accumulated costs, but notice that there's one, two, three, four, five built-in views by default, including cost by resource, daily costs, cost by service, and invoice details. The bad news here is that I'm unable to actually show you a pretty picture because the subscription that I have is a sponsorship offer type. Again, review. Remember subscription offers from a lesson or two ago? And not every subscription offer is compatible yet with cost management and billing. Tell you what, we can do a quick search 
for Azure Cost Management Cost Analysis and see if good old Google Images can give us something to look at. Just so you have something to anchor in your mind. Sure, let's go to the Microsoft documentation. They have this quick start here. I'm going to find a screenshot, right click it, put it into another tab. Aha, this is the ticket. So as I was saying, we've got the ability to change your view based on scope, your billing scope, and then you can choose a view in a time range and optionally you can add filters another element of review from earlier in this course remember azure governance and taxonomic tags besides the billing scope taxonomic tags are another way to identify cost centers in your azure subscriptions and you can actually bring in tags as a filter class and chart that related to this concept of cost analysis is as you can see on the left hand settings the ability to set alerts when your cost reaches a certain threshold or or by contrast, if your subscription offer uses credit, when your credit burns down to a particular threshold. And you can also create budgets to make sure that your spend over time is in line with what's in your budgets. You can see we've got Azure Advisor. I'm pretty positive we've talked about Azure Advisor. This is a machine learning based service that's free that gives you recommendations among many proven practices in Azure. In other words, it's going to be tailored to what you're doing in Azure, and the advisor recommendations in the cost management blade are, logically enough, associated with tips and tricks for optimizing your spend. Learning resources, we've got first Microsoft Docs article on cost management basics at timw.info forward slash cmb1. Second, for information on cost management pricing, go to timw.info forward slash cmb2. Lastly, if you are a developer or maybe you want to give your developers programmatic access into cost management and billing in Azure, you'll want to know about the cost management REST API. That documentation is at timw.info forward slash cmb3. All right, cool. Another episode down. The next episode is concerning Azure Service Level Agreements or SLAs. My Twitter is Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site courses are timw.info forward slash ps. And my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next lesson.